dearie. I, I'm so sorry. I didn't see you there. Let me in. Yes. What, what, what can I do for you? Oh, you just stopped by to say hi. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I was just uh, in the back tidying up a bit and looking for... It doesn't matter. Um, did, did you... Oh. <laughs> no, it's, it's really not a big deal. I was just looking for something that I knew we had around here when I was a child, but I haven't seen it in a while, so... Oh, well. It's something that I think Penham wrote about in, in her journal here. I've been working on translating it, and there's a section where she talks about a, a chest, per se, that she says holds her greatest treasure. Now, from what I know about Penham, her greatest treasure is most likely knowledge. Some sort of in-depth research. You know, the, the more that I've translated this journal of hers, the more I've realized that she, she shares some of her findings in here, but knowing how detailed she was, I would be surprised if there isn't quite a lot more somewhere. And she actually has a picture of the chest in here, and I'm fairly certain that it's one that I used to play with when I was a child. But can't seem to find it anywhere. Although I did, in my searching, I found this strange little key. Never seen it before. It's, it's probably been here, but there's quite a lot of stuff in this old house. <laughs> this is Penham's old house, as you know, that my family inherited. Um, I've lived here my whole life, and there's all kinds of random, strange things in, in the attic upstairs. Now, my parents, when they ran this mercantile, it was far more no-nonsense business, you know, just necessities that the townspeople of Whisperwind needed, which is perfectly fine. I have quite a lot of those items here as well. But since I've taken over, it's, uh, it's become something a bit more. I've tried to systematically sort through all of the the strange, random things that Penham had, or, you know, her family or children or other people who lived in this house. Anyway, so I found this key. And I can't be sure, but I think this might go to that chest that I used to play with. You see, it's, it's just this little chest, not very big, you know, um, but it's very beautifully, ornately decorated. And my sister and I actually used to play with it when we were little, and we would try to imagine what was inside, because it was always locked. And then a few times we actually tried to open it through other means. Definitely not taking a hammer to it. Definitely not. But every time that we tried to get it open, there seemed to be some sort of a force around it. Something protecting it so that you couldn't open it without key. I would love to find that chest again. Although, you know, the more I think about it, she might have taken it with her. Mm. Well, I suppose we'll never know. Sorry. Um, anyway. Who? <sighs> well, I mentioned my sister. Um, yeah, we grew up in this house together with my parents running the mercantile down here. And she and I would play up in the attic all the time with all the interesting, fascinating things up there. We were both quite enchanted, quite inspired by the world that Penham left behind for us up there. And when my sister was, uh, she was a bit older than me. So when she was old enough, she actually started an apprenticeship with Farron out in her cottage, what, what Luna is now. That was my sister before her. And they worked together for, oh, years at least. It was maybe even a whole decade. And they, um, they worked very well together for a while. And then something happened. And I've never really gotten the whole story from either of them. But there was some sort of a falling out. And my sister came home 
from the cottage one day and just announced that she was leaving. Not just leaving Farron and the apprenticeship, but leaving Whisperwind. She said that there was nothing left for her here, and she needed to go find her place in the world elsewhere. So, of course, I, uh, I gave her plenty of supplies and things from the shop. I didn't want to just send her out into a world she'd never been in before with nothing. So I told her she could have any of the, the supplies that she thought she needed. And then she asked if she could take a few things from the attic as well. Some of those relics that I hadn't been able to sort through yet. Of course, I said, yes, it's my sister. What was I supposed to do? But um, I guess I didn't realize quite how much she wanted to take. <laughs> All sorts of fascinating treasures and things. Yeah, I thought I documented everything that she took once she was gone, but I must have missed that chest. Hmm. Oh, well. That was all, all about five years ago or so. I haven't heard from her since, so. I'm assuming that wherever the chest is, just like her, it is long gone. No, I, I haven't heard from her at all. I've sent a few messengers to the city that she said she was going to, but I never heard back from any of them. I have no idea if she's even there or if she went off somewhere else. I don't know. I suppose it will remain a mystery. What city? Well, see, that's, that's the difficult thing, is because it is a city that is sort of a gateway to the rest of, not just the kingdom, but the rest of the world, actually. It's a port city on the uh, eastern shore of our kingdom here. It's called Tivermac. It's quite an important trading route, both for ships leaving our kingdom and for plenty of ships coming in. Lots of things that we have in this kingdom we don't have here naturally. Lots of exotic spices and different types of materials that are not common to our kingdom come from trading ships, and most of them go through Tivermac. So she could still be in Tivermac, or she could have gotten on a ship and gone who knows where. <laughs> I keep hoping one day that she'll come back. Or at least just reach out, just a, a letter or something. But it's been so long now, I I don't know. Again, I, I don't know what happened between her and Farron, but um, they're both very strong-willed. Stubborn. They're both stubborn. So stubborn. Both very intelligent, very fascinating, creative, innovative women. So I suppose it was maybe only a matter of time before something clashed in their strong personalities. But still, Farron won't tell me what happened. She, um, she refuses to talk about it. In fact, she hardly even talks to me anymore. I would love to know, maybe, someday. Farron? Oh, yeah, no, she's she's quite a bit older than she looks. I don't know how old, really, but when we were, you know, younger, she was here, and she was working out in her cottage like she always has. Yeah. I guess I never really thought about it. She's always just been here, been a constant. You know, maybe she has some wonderful cream or something that she puts on her face from all of those wonderful magical plants that she has. <laughs> something like that to keep her looking fresh and young. But no, she's quite a bit older than she looks. I don't know. You... You want to go to Tivermac to try to find my sister? <laughs> that is very kind of you. It's It's... A wonderful offer, but frankly, I don't even know if she's there. Like I said, she could be anywhere in the entire world. I, I couldn't just send you on a fool's errand like that. The chest? Well, yes, of course I would like to have the chest. I would love to know what was in there. I feel like that is 
what Penham was talking about in here was was the more in-depth part of her research that she wanted to protect was in that chest. I think it would, yeah, just open up this whole journal. Just give me so many more insights into her and what she was doing. You know, there's actually a point in this journal. It's a little ways in. She, she spends quite a lot of time talking about the journey to this place that became their settlement, that then became Whisperwind, and about, you know, developing the town here and her beginning studies of the magical rift where the essence was coming from. And then she starts talking about all these different people who came by the town once they started to sort of spread the word a bit more. And there's one person in particular that she talks about quite a bit. Where is it? What was his name? Oh, here it is. It was a human named, where was it? Calamus. And she talks about him quite a while, says that he was drawn to this place just like she was. And she was so excited to have someone that had sort of that same desire to learn and grow and study. And then she just completely changes subject and never mentions him again for the rest of the book. I don't know. Maybe they had a falling out too. You never know. But um, anyway, after those entries, her tone seems to shift and it becomes a bit more mundane, a bit more secretive, per se. Maybe that's when she decided to keep things more to herself and not write down everything in her journal. Anyway, whatever's in that chest, maybe it's nothing, but it could be incredibly valuable learning more about Penham and the town of Whisperwind and the, the rift, the magical energy. But like I said, it's a fool's errand. Going all the way to a town that you've never been to, to find my sister who may or may not be there, who may or may not have the chest, that may or may not have Penham's research in it. Do you, do you see where I'm going with this? You're determined to go. <laughs> well, you are a traveler, aren't you? You need to travel somewhere. <laughs> I suppose Tivermac is as good a place to travel as any. It's quite a fascinating town. Like I said, people from all over the kingdom and all over the world pass through the docks of Tivermac. So it should be quite the experience, really. Well, all right, traveler, if you would like to go and seek out my sister, I won't stop you. Her name is Maggie. She looks quite a lot like me, actually. Uh, a bit older, a bit rougher around the edges, per se. She always was, but um, she's got a good soul. I think if you see her, you'll probably recognize her. You know... Here's the thing. Say that you do, by chance, find Maggie, and she does, by chance, have this chest. I doubt that she would just give it to you for free. Maggie has always been a rather enterprising individual. <laughs> I think she would probably want something to trade. Hmm, let's see, what would she... Oh, I know. Where is it? in my jewelry over here. Here. This. I bet she would find most fascinating. It's this large metal cuff crafted by the dwarves, of course. All the best metal things are. As you can see, it's got some beautiful, intricate designs on it. These lovely sunflowers along the middle. And some other different geometric swirls and this pattern almost look like waves on there. It's even got a little dent on it. <laughs> it is quite old, after all. Personally, to me, when things like this have little dents or nicks or imperfections, it just adds to the story of the item, doesn't it? Beautifully crafted. 
and still very lightweight. You know, it wouldn't wouldn't really uh, weigh you down very much. But it really seems like something that my sister would love. She took a few things when she left that were similar to this cuff. I bet she probably didn't see it, otherwise she would have taken it too. But I would guess that if you offered her this in exchange for some random chest that she probably still hasn't been able to open, she would probably jump on it. Now that is assuming that you find her and that she still has the chest. Who knows if she maybe traded it to someone or something or just lost it along the way. But if you're determined to go and you want to look for her, I must admit it is an appealing offer to find not just the chest, of course, but my sister. We were very close when we were younger, and then as we grew, we realized how different we were. And we still, we were still close, but not quite as close. And then after she left, and I've never heard from her again, I guess. Maybe she didn't think we were as close as I thought we were. Either way, if you find her, that would be rather amazing. So, why don't you take this and you can trade that for her? No, no, you don't have to pay for it. This will be a trade. You're just the messenger, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, I would go myself, but um, honestly, I'm not sure that she wants to see me. I think if she had wanted to see me, she would be back by now. Maybe a stranger has a better chance of just running into her, perhaps. Well, um, it will probably take a little preparation before you make such a long journey. Tivermac is several days away, so you should probably uh, head on to the tavern and see if you can convince Rosie to pack you up some food for your journey. And maybe Victoria would have a good map for you. Actually, I think Rhea has a map now. She said that with all of the traveling that you've been doing and questions that you ask, that she figured she might as well have a good map of the kingdom. I think the last time Isabel went to Danwood, Rhea asked her to pick up a, a map for her. <laughs> anyway. I'll, um, I'll put together a, uh, an adventures pack for you too, just to make sure that you have supplies that will help you along the road to Tivermac. Although, unfortunately, that's really all I know about her, so once you get to Tivermac, you'll be on your own. But maybe you'll find her. Maybe. Well, I'm glad you stopped by today. I wish you luck in your journey. Even if you don't find my sister in the chest, perhaps you'll find something else interesting to such a fascinating traveler such as yourself. <laughs> anyway, sounds like you have a new adventure to get ready for. Well, hopefully it won't be long before you're home. I'll see you again. But for now, I guess we will part ways. See you later.